Douglas. Dr. Baker, you said I could drop by and talk to you. That's right. What's the problem? Well, you see, sir, after I graduate, I had planned to go on for my master's. Fine. Fine. I hope you make it. Well, that's just the point, sir. I'm not going to make it unless I do better in your class. It's the only subject that's giving me real trouble. Oh? Well, what was your midterm grade? C. You got it with you? Yes, sir. Sit down, Douglas. I can't raise your grade on this paper, Douglas. Well, I know, sir. I, I just thought perhaps you could advise me on how I could bring up my grade. Well, the only solution I know is to find someone to help you. Perhaps a tutor. A tutor? Could you suggest a good one? You know Harper? No, sir. I've never met him. <laughs> it's a her. Jerry Harper, chemistry instructor. Yes? Miss Harper? Hmm? Oh, Robbie Douglas, Dr. Baker's class. He recommended you for some chemistry tutoring? Oh. Ah, come in. Please excuse the way the place looks. I've been catching up on my house cleaning. Uh, anything I can do? Why, thank you. Yes, sir. You could hand me the curtain. Oh, all right. Here we go. So, you're in Baker's class, huh? Yeah, he's tough. Uh, tough and the best. How'd you do in your midterm? C. Oh, that's not too bad. It's not good enough if you want to make graduate school. Oh, one of those. Well, I charge five dollars a lesson, or three fifty an hour if you take six lessons. It's a deal, six. Maybe I should give you a reduction in rates for helping me with the curtains. <laughs> Just get me through the finals. Well, we can start now if you like. Fine, sooner the better. How are you in uh, acid base and uh, oxidation reduction reactions? I'm rotten. That's good. Good. Well, if you weren't rotten, you wouldn't be here, and uh, I need the money. Oh. <laughs> Your tutoring sounds like a good idea, Rob. If you need some extra money, let me know. Yeah, thanks, Dad. I can handle it so far. You think this uh, Miss Harper can help you? Oh, she's a whiz. One lesson, and I already understand some of this stuff. Well, sounds like a bright woman. Very intelligent. I remember I had a lady Latin tutor once. She was on the track team. Uh, put the shot. Muscles. <laughs> <laughs> I think Miss Harper is more the tennis anyone type. Oh. Well, just remember, you're there to improve your chemistry and not your back end. <laughs> okay, you guys, wash up. And tell Robbie I got something that'll make him think better. Fish. Call him, Ernie. Robbie, fish! I could have done that. Come on, go get him, will you? He's concentrating. Okay. Always me. Nothing. <laughs> You know something, Chip? Chemistry I never could understand. What did they use all those crazy symbols for? Well, Robbie told me that uh, H2O means water. <laughs> the letters of the chemical elements, oxygen and hydrogen. Everything is composed of various elements. You take salt, for instance, sodium and chlorine. But it's easier to write NaCl. You just reminded me. What? Uh, to put some NaCl into my H2O, or you won't eat the S-O-U-P. Hello, Rod. Come in. Miss Harper, you look wonderful. You look pretty good yourself. Come on. <laughs> you uh, dress like that just for my chemistry lesson? Not exactly. I have a date after the lesson, and I won't have time to change. Mm. You know, you don't look much like a tutor. At least, my image of a tutor. Well, I'll try to think like a tutor. Shall I get started? Mm -hmm. First, we'll review the last lesson. What is that you're wearing? Oh, it's a little something I bought last year. No, I mean the perfume. Like it? Yeah, I, I like it. Thank you. You know, I, I like your hair. Look, 
Well, now that we've concluded the anatomy lesson, shall we turn to chemistry? <laughs> Suppose I check your formula. That's very good, Robbie. You make it almost easy to understand chemistry. I'm glad. Next lesson, we'll start on the heavy metals. Hi, Don. Hi, Jerry. Oh, uh, Robbie Douglas, this is Don Lennox. I'll just get my coat. Glad to know you, son. How do you do, sir? I uh, hope I didn't interrupt your lesson. No, no, we just finished. Well, Jerry, it tells me how important this uh, tutoring is to you college kids. Oh, yes, sir. Well, I better be going. Uh, nice to have met you. Goodbye, Miss Harper. Bye, Robbie. I'll see you Thursday at 7. Oh, uh, goodbye, son. Bye. <laughs> Quiet all of a sudden. Yes, it did. I'm sorry, but in the uh, rush of mumbled introductions, I didn't catch your name. Steve Douglas. Uh, Steve. I'm Jerry Harper. Jerry. Well, it's uh, nice to meet you uh, again, Jerry. <laughs> I have a student by the name of Douglas, Robbie Douglas. You don't mean to tell me you're Robbie's Miss Harper? Yes. Well, I'm his father. Oh, my. Oh. <laughs> Well, Rob didn't tell me that you were, uh, well... Thank you for what I'm jumping to the conclusion you were going to say. Uh, brains and beauty. You're talking. Well, if I'd had a teacher like you back at Midwest, I, I'd have majored in chemistry. You are nice. Seems to be an inherited trait. <laughs> well, Jerry, I've never uh, danced with a chemistry instructor before, but, uh, at least not on purpose. I've never danced with a student's father before, on purpose. <laughs> Steve. Ah, morning, everybody. I'm morning, sorry to wait. Hi. Well, uh, how was your date last night? Oh, she was very nice, Sally. Oh, I, uh, I happened to meet someone else. Very interesting, Rob. Your tutor. Miss Harper? Yeah. You didn't tell me Jerry was young and very pretty. Jerry? Pretty? How can a teacher be pretty? <laughs> Mr. Murphy's my teacher. He has a mustache. <laughs> I'll see ya. Oh, so long. Goodbye. Yes, I'm seeing Jerry again tonight. Tonight? Now, we sort of hit it off. You know, uh, you know how it is you meet somebody and you start talking and all at once you're your old friends in five minutes. Oh, I'm sure you do, Rob. I suppose to you, she seems like an old middle-aged woman, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, middle-aged. Excuse me. Bye, Rob. Dad. It's kind of late. What are you doing up? Oh, I couldn't sleep. I, I thought I'd read a while. Oh. Did you have a good time? Yeah, I had a very nice evening. Where'd you go? Oh, uh, went to dinner and a show. Did she invite you in for coffee afterwards? Well, yes. As a matter of fact, she did. Stay very long? No. Uh, why all the questions, Rob? Oh, nothing. I, I just wondered if you had a good time. Oh. Yes, I had a very nice evening. Thank you. You know, it's funny. I used to wait up for you and ask all the questions. <laughs> kind of a switch, isn't it? Good night. Good night. Hi, Rob. Hi, Miss Harper. This is for you. Oh, thank you. What's the occasion? No, I just felt like it. Oh. Can I open it? Oh, sure. Go ahead. Oh, you really shouldn't, though. Well. Oh, chocolates. <laughs> well, you're, you're supplying the coffee and sandwiches. I thought I should contribute something. It's very sweet of you, Robbie. This is a big year for me with the, with the Douglas family. You're very large with Dad, too. You know, I just can't get over it. What? Oh, Steve being your father. Yeah, he's quite a guy, isn't he? Not for his age. <laughs> 
Thanks. Now let's move on to the halogens. If you move your chair up close to me, you can read with me. And let's start here. The halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and astatine, have seven electrons in the valence shell with configuration S2P5. The elements are all non-metallic and form diatomic molecules, such as F2 and Cl2. At room temperature, fluorine and chlorine are gases, bromine is a volatile liquid, and iodine and astatine are solids. Clear? Huh? Sure. <laughs> Good. Repeat. Repeat? Halogens. Oh, uh, halogens. Fluorine, uh, bromine, iodine. Uh, I'm sorry, Miss Harper, I, I forgot. What's the matter, Robbie? I, I don't know. I, I just don't seem able to concentrate today. Is something on your mind? I guess you could say that. Do you want to talk about it? No. Why not? I thought we were friends. Perhaps I could help you. Uh, thanks. It's just something that I should handle on my own. Hello. Oh, hi there. Rob, uh, could you do me a big favor? I'm stuck here at the office tonight, and I've got a date with Jerry to take her to an important dinner. Uh, could you fill in for me? Jerry? To dinner? Me? Oh, thanks, Rob. Eight o'clock. Oh, uh, I'm glad you said yes, because I've already told her you'd take her. Okay, Dad, I'll be glad to help out. So long. Dad's stuck at the office tonight. I thought he had another date with that female chemist. He did. He had to ask me to help out. Dad's sending you in to pitch it for him? Uh-huh. When a team has a weak bench, it's in trouble. <laughs> I better get dressed. Hey, it's only four o'clock. I have to shave. Between now and dinner, you could shave one hair at a time. Is that Robbie? Hi. Oh, you look great. Thank you. Uh, this is for you, Miss Harper. Oh. oh, it's a beautiful corsage. And please call me Jerry tonight. Okay. Here, uh, let me pin it on, Jerry. Do that very gracefully. I bet Steve would have been all thumbs. Oh, he, he seems to do all right. There. Uh, may I? No, Robbie, I'm afraid this is going to be one of those typically dull faculty get-togethers. I don't blame Steve for chickening out. Well, I'm sure if he had a choice, he'd be here. I know I'm here because I want to be. Well, let's go. Hello, Dr. Baker. Oh, Douglas. You helping out here this evening? No, sir. I'm a guest. I'm here with Jerry. Jerry? Uh, Miss Harper. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, thank you, Robbie. Uh, Jerry? Dr. Thornton, this is Robbie Douglas. How do you do? I'm in one of Dr. Thornton's classes. Oh? Yes. Which one? American Lit, 135. All I recall is a mass of hostile faces. <laughs> Dr. Thornton, would you like some punch? Then, thank you. Uh -huh. Robbie, if you're interested in American literature, we were just talking about uh, Henry Robinson. You know, that new writer who uh, became an expatriate because he found everything here so vulgar and crass? Uh, one of those. As I recall, it was Henry James who first left America because he felt our culture was too shallow and based on false values of materialism. That's right. You seem to know quite a bit about James. One of my favorites. Not one of mine, I'm afraid. Yeah. Women don't like him. They think he didn't understand them. Well, Gail Hamilton liked him. Hamilton? She was ten years older than James. I believe that she was secretly in love with him. That's uh, very interesting, Robbie. Uh, come and see me, Douglas. I'd like to talk to you some more about this. Thank you, sir. Never get a chance to be well enough acquainted with my good students. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. It's pretty obvious you don't need any tutoring in American lit. I owe it all to my dentist. Your dentist? 
So I read all this stuff about James while waiting for my appointment in a magazine article called Interesting Literary Sidelights. <laughs> Jerry, uh, I want to thank you. Thank me? Well, for not telling everybody I'm filling in for Dad. It took something not to make excuses for being here with a student. Robbie, I'm very proud to be here with you. Really? Or are you just being polite? Not at all. I value your friendship. And uh, I hope you'll still call me after we've finished the tutoring. Jerry, uh, why don't we sit down? Fine. Do you mind if I ask you a personal question? Personal? What is your opinion of people marrying when there's, well, quite a big age difference? Well, I don't think that age matters, Robbie. You don't? No, compatibility isn't a matter of age. It's more a matter of, um... Uh, comparable maturity? Yes. A man can be, uh, mature at 20 or childish at 40. Jerry, uh, tonight may I come in for a cup of coffee? Uh, well, uh, sure. Uh, though I think you ought to wait until we get home. <laughs> Stay tuned. Twice as nice mornings continues with my... Well, I thought you might sleep right through breakfast. They did last night, Uncle Charlie. Jerry, Stephen, the boys are gone, and so is the bacon. Just coffee. I've got an 11 o'clock chem lab. Oh, speaking of chemistry, uh, kiss her goodnight. A gentleman doesn't tell. I know that. Uh, kiss her goodnight. <laughs> no. I'll bet your dad doesn't need her. You know, sometimes I think that Ernie's the only member of this family getting any action. <laughs> we had a serious talk. She invited me in for coffee after the party. How does she feel about uh, dating a kid and his father at the same time? She doesn't think I'm a kid. Maybe you better tell me what you got in mind. Uncle Charlie, you'll hear the big announcement when everyone else does. When it's official. Like, uh, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> hear what? You're going steady again? <laughs> big deal. <laughs> Hi, Dad. Stayed up late studying tonight, huh? Yeah. Well, uh, don't stay up too late. Good night. Uh, Dad, uh, how is Jerry? Oh, she's fine. Rob, I didn't want to bring it up tonight, but, uh, well, as long as you seem to be in the mood for conversation, Jerry told me what you did, and, uh... Well, it was pretty embarrassing, Rob. What I did? Yeah. Asking her how she felt about marriage when there's a big difference in ages. She knew who she was driving at. You did? I mean, she did? Well, yeah. So we might as well get the record straight, Rob. I enjoy being with her, but I'm not in love with her. Oh, Dad, that's great. Well, we're just good friends. So uh, <laughs> it's a little premature to be sounding her out on whether she thinks I'm too old for her. But, Dad... Luckily, she has a sense of humor, so we laughed about it. But... She laughed at what I said? Well, naturally. It is a little unusual for a young man your age to be shopping around for a mother. A mother? Well, yeah, that's what she'd be if she married me. Well, even with an age difference. So, uh, well, if anything like this comes up again, Rob, let's, uh, let's talk it over first, huh? Yeah, sure, Dad. Okay. Well, good night. Good night. <sighs> she thinks I was asking her to be my mother. Somebody get his license number. <laughs> hey, who locked the door? Uh, nobody. It just got stuck. Oh, again? Yeah. I hope you were the mailman. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just your father, Rob, but uh, here's the mail. Oh, I'm expecting a letter from the college. I thought they might have sent a registered or something like this. Oh. Let's see. There it is. That's it. This is my grade in the chemistry final. Oh. An A! I got an A! Well, congratulations, yeah. Rob. That's, That's great, good work, Rob. Rob. Hey. Rob, why don't you call Jerry and tell her? She'd be proud of you. Yeah. Come and get it. Victory celebration. <laughs> Well, I made it for you, Rob, to celebrate your age. Well, he hadn't gotten an egg. Then I would have eaten it myself. <laughs> what kind of cake, Uncle 
Cotterell? Oh, a little H2O and some NACL and junk like that. Well, too bad Miss Harper doesn't give lessons in algebra. I could use her. Yeah, Jerry's a very nice girl. I thought so. Do you ever see her around the campus? Yeah, sometimes. She asks about you. Oh. But whatever happened, Dad? Eh? Oh, nothing, Rob. She got wrapped up in finals and I, uh, I got tied up at the plant. Yeah, she's a great girl. Too bad she's at the awkward age. The awkward age? Uh, too old for you and uh, too young for me. <laughs> I never thought of it in that way. The awkward age. <laughs> Say, Dad, uh, could I borrow a few dollars? Yeah, I guess so, right? Oh, thanks. You're going the formal bit, huh? Big date? No, no, just a dinner party. It was dark. Hi. Uh, say, Dad. No, hmm? oh, here. No, oh, thanks. Uh, wait, see if you can't straighten that out for me, will you? Why don't you get one of those clip-on ties? No, if I didn't have trouble tying my bow tie, I wouldn't feel I was going formal. <laughs> thanks. Here, help yourself. Any amount. Hey, thanks. Well, up to five dollars. Oh, well, I'll go the whole route. Whose dinner party is it? Well, you uh, remember Mr. Ferguson at the office? Yeah. Well, he's finally getting married. Getting married? We must be past 50 years old. Well, he's 52 to be exact. So we're, uh, we're giving him a little bachelor dinner tonight. Oh, you mean you're throwing a stag? No, we are not throwing a stag. <laughs> we are giving him a little bachelor party tonight. Well, it's the same thing, Dad. It is not the same thing. There's a slight difference, Rob. <laughs> All these men are grown, mature men. Al Baxter is 70 years old. He's been married almost 50 years. Now, can't you just see him at the kind of a stag party you're talking about? Or any of the fellas at the office, for that matter. Or for that matter, me. Well, yes. I've been to a few bachelor dinners, Dad. Sooner or later, in come the dancing girls. No, the dancing girls won't come in. Tonight is just dinner and maybe an after-dinner drink and a cigar. And I'll be home by uh, 10.30. Sure you will, Dad. <laughs> Well, Fergie, you're marrying a wonderful girl. I know you're going to be very happy. Thank you, Steve. You know, this was really very nice of you and the boys. Oh, it was a pleasure. You know, uh, we were beginning to think you and Kathy never would get married. How long were you engaged, anyway? <laughs> Fourteen years, come May. <laughs> didn't want to rush into it, huh? <laughs> Dave tells me you're taking two weeks off your honeymoon. Where are you going? Or is it a secret? No, no, we're driving downstate to visit Kathy's aunt for a week. Oh, I see. Well, uh, sounds like a very nice honeymoon. <laughs> Having fun, fellas? Oh, everything's just fine, Tom. Thanks. Yes, you arranged a great dinner, Tom. <laughs> great. Sure did. Well, Dave, I guess about time to hit the road. Good night, Fergie. Good night, Tom. Good night, Good night, Tom. <laughs> nice party, Tom. Oh, uh, wait, Steve, Dave, don't go. Fellas, uh, the party isn't over. Oh? You know, you asked me to arrange a bachelor dinner, and I arranged a bachelor dinner. You know, a little entertainment. A few lovely females to remind Fergie of his bachelorhood he's giving up. Fergie, would you mind the box seat? <laughs> Here's our first little lady right now. Gentlemen, I give you Flame LaRoe. <laughs> Did you know anything about this? Uh, no. I guess Robbie was right. He said a bachelor dinner's a bachelor dinner, and sooner or later in come the dancing girls. <laughs> well, maybe it's Tom's idea of a joke. Yeah. If it is, uh, he didn't tell her. Dave, I... Uh, I don't want to be a wet boy. I know. This isn't for me either. Let's uh, see if we can't duck out of here without uh, putting a damper on the enthusiasm, such as it is. Uh, 
Oh, Steve, you got a light? Yeah. Well, I guess Tom thinks that's the only way to make a bachelor dinner official. I hope she doesn't catch cold. <laughs> but at least we had a good turnout for Fergie, huh? Yeah, right. <laughs> Move. Turn on the lights. All right, I want to get some names and addresses here. How long have you just been in here? Fellas, please, will you help me? Look, Miss LaFlame. Uh, LaRose. Uh, Miss LaRose, what is this, part of the gag? Gag? That's no gag. That's a raid in there. You mean a real raid? Yes, a real raid. Dave, maybe we'd better go back in there and see if we can straighten it out. Straighten it out, Dad? Oh, look, it's... Let's get out of here, Steve. It's every man for himself. Oh, wait. What am I going to do? My clothes are in there. Well, I'm terribly sorry, miss, but I'm a married man. Now, good night and good luck. Uh, oh, well, then you're not married. Well, no, no, I'm not married, but that doesn't mean I'm going back in there after your clothes. Good night. Mister, you can't just leave me here like this. What, what, what else can I do? Oh, mister, this is the first stag I ever worked. Now, let's get one thing straight, Mr. Rose. That was not a stag. At least it wasn't at first. It was a simple bachelor dinner. Call it what you want. I, I'm just a dancer. See, I was out of work, and my agent called, and I needed the money. Can't you please help me? Well, all right. I'll, I'll give you some money, and you take a cab and go home. A cab? If I set foot on the street to get a cab, the first cop that sees me, whammo, he's not going to believe I was babysitting in his outfit. No, I, I don't imagine you. <laughs> I'm Jack. I'll give you my business card, and I'd appreciate it if you'd have it returned to my office tomorrow. Good night. Oh, wait. Couldn't you just drop me at my hotel? It I... isn't very far, and I, and I could hunch down. Nobody would see I'm me. Sorry. We'd sneak out through the parking lot. Oh, 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 oh. come on. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Douglas. You're a real gentleman. If you wait just a minute, I'll go get my key and run up to the room and get a coat and I'll bring your jacket back. Fine, fine. I'm in a hurry with that. Right. I'd like to get home. Okay. <laughs> That's why I took that miserable club date tonight. And now the manager left orders not to give me my key unless I come up with the money. All of it. Wow. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not your problem. Here. Gee, thanks for everything. Well, it's all right. I, I wish I could help, but uh, I'm afraid I don't have $45. Of eh? mm. course, you, uh, you do have some place to go. Dress like this? Oh, no, I mean, uh, you have a family or a girlfriend. Uh... Yeah, back in Peoria. Oh, don't worry. I'm, I'll be okay. Yeah, well, I, I wish I could be of more help, but, uh, well, good night. Good night. Uh, good night. Look, Miss LaRose, put the jacket back on and come with me. First thing we're going to do is get you some clothes. My son Robbie's about your size. Oh, you have a son? Yes, I have three of them at home. Well, come on. Just wait here. I'm going up to Robbie's room. Oh, Mr. Douglas, mm. here. Oh, why, why don't you just leave it to... You won't be gone long, will you? Oh, I'll have some clothes for you in a minute. You just trust me. Mr. Douglas, if I didn't trust you, I wouldn't be here. Just me. Oh, Dad. Hey, what time is it? Oh, it's, uh, it's about 10.30. Oh, you're home early, like you said. 
Yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, what are you doing? Hmm? Oh, I was just uh, uh, straightening out your dresser drawers here, Bob. You're kind of a mess. <laughs> I don't mean to get to sure about the sneakers, but she said they're new. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, why don't you change right there in the kitchen? Everybody's asleep, that's why. I'm not. What do you want in the kitchen? A glass of milk. A glass of milk at this time of the night? I'm thirsty. Well, you can't be thirsty, Ernie. Why not? Well, because you always have a glass of milk before you go to bed. It wore off. Ernie. All right, you, you, you stay right here and I'll, uh, I'll get the milk for you. Well, why can't I get it? Because, uh, because I, I just want to get it for you, that's all. You'd like me to get it for you, wouldn't you? Well, when I'm in bed, I'd like you to get it for me. But then you always tell me to get it myself. Well, uh, that's different, Ernie. Well, it's just different, that's all. You take my word for it. We'll, uh, we'll discuss it in the morning. <laughs> all right, Ernie, I'll, uh, I'll get you some milk, and uh, then you can run upstairs and hop into bed, huh? Just drink it out of a bottle, huh? Need all. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Night. Oh, uh, good night. You uh, sure that's all the milk you want? Yeah. Night, Dad. Uh, good night. <laughs> See, this takes me back to high school. My dad and I used to have coffee after a dance. Gee, I didn't realize Peoria could be so nice. Well, here we are. Gee, thanks, Mr. Douglas. That's all right. Just need to get you back in your room and uh, have a couple of meals. You can pay me back whenever you can. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I forgot to tell you. <laughs> you made it out to flame the rose. Well, yes. I, I just used that name for tonight. I... I don't know whether you believe me. That was the first time I ever danced at a stag. Uh, a bachelor dinner, please. <laughs> bachelor dinner. My real name is just plain stupid Margaret Smith. Well, I'll tear this one up and make one out to just plain stupid Margaret Smith. <laughs> Morning, Rob. Did you have a nice time last night, Dad? Oh, uh, it was all right. I was wrong. About what, Rob? About, uh, well, the bachelor dinner. Oh. Yes, it was just a friendly gathering. Boy, that's not like the stags I remember. <laughs> Dad? Well, what's a stag? Uh, just eat your breakfast, Charlie. <laughs> morning, Dad. Morning, Uncle Charlie. Morning, Rob. Morning, Eddie. What's your breakfast? Chocolate soda and French ice cream. Again? <laughs> Just eat your breakfast. Hey, dear. Yes, sir. What happened to the girl? <laughs> what girl? Uh, the 
the one with the tassels. Uh, you saw a girl with tassels? Like what? Hmm? They were pretty. Kind of pink. You see her on TV? Uh, Ernie, we can have a round table discussion some other time, huh? Let's all just uh, eat our breakfast. Uh, she wasn't on TV. She was right here in our kitchen. Boy, Dad, you keep telling me if I run around with no clothes on, I'll catch a call. <laughs> I didn't hear her sneeze or not. In our kitchen? This kitchen? Yeah. I didn't get a real good look, but she had enough clothes to hold up the tassels. <laughs> hey, Dad, was that a real diamond she had on her stomach? No, uh, Ernie, uh... Are you sure you weren't dreaming? Dad, if it was a dream, we both dreamed it. I saw when you wouldn't let me go into the kitchen to get some milk. Don't you remember, Dad? <laughs> All right, Steve, you might as well make a full confession. I wondered where these came from. I was going to have a talk with Robbie after breakfast. <laughs> Just a little bachelor dinner, huh, Dad? Okay. I went to this bachelor dinner last night for Mr. Ferguson. And there was a fellow there, uh, Tom Banner, who, strictly on his own, arranged to have this young girl entertain. What's her name? Maybe I've seen her on TV. Flame LaRose. Flame LaRose? Yes. Maybe late, late TV. <laughs> Flame LaRose is her professional name. Her, her real name is Margaret Smith. Oh, I like Flame LaRose better. <laughs> Boy, Dad, wait till I tell the guys at junior high. Imagine, some of my friends think you're an old guy. Well, I suppose you could say that uh, Mr. Welch and I are old guys. We, uh, we left about the time she started to dance. We uh, sort of sneaked out the back way. And a couple of seconds later, the other guests had to leave, too, uh, rather hurriedly. Like there was a fire? Well, in a way, yes, sir. Uh, anyway, during all the excitement, uh, Flame, uh, uh, Margaret, uh, uh, Miss Smith, uh, sort of bumped into us, and, uh, well, she asked me to drive her to her hotel, uh, which I did. Well, she found out that, uh, she'd been locked out of her room because she hadn't paid her rent. So, uh, I couldn't very well leave her standing there and with the... Well, anyway, I, I got the idea that uh, maybe she could wear some of your clothes, Rob, and, uh, so I brought her here. Oh, so that's why you were up in my room. Yes, yes. What happened then? Well, well, nothing. I, I mean, she changed her clothes here in the kitchen, and, uh... Yeah, well, I was drinking the milk out of the bottle. Yes. And uh, then I put her in a cab and sent her over to Helen Anderson's to spend the night. And, uh, that's all there was to it. Oh. Well, so you see, uh, Dad was just helping out a damsel in distress. Absolutely. No doubt about it. Who said he wasn't? Come to think of it, nobody. Steve, you know I really believe it. It couldn't have happened just that way to anyone else. Only you. Dad? Oh, hi, Chip. What's on your mind? Well, it's about Ernie. You see, Dad? Him hearing all this junk about ladies with diamonds. Diamonds on their stomachs? Yeah. Well, he's just a kid. I mean, you, me, and Uncle Charlie, and Robbie are... Men of the world, huh? Well, yeah. Well, as far as I'm concerned, it's okay if you bring home the whole floor show. Except I think we ought to tell Ernie he was having a dream. You didn't really bring her home. Chip, a young lady was in trouble and I tried to help her. Now, is there anything wrong in that? Well, no. But I was just telling the guys at the mall shop about it. Oh. And uh, what did the guys say? Well. I see. Well, Chip, the uh, choice is yours. You can believe me or uh, you can enjoy your friend's fantasies. Maybe you think uh, when someone's in trouble, you ought to get a full report on their family tree and character before you offer to help. Well, no, Dad. But I'm not a kid anymore. Now that I'm a sophomore in junior high, 
And I thought we ought to just talk it over man to man. Well, fine, Chip. I, uh, I enjoyed the talk. The dad? Yes, Chip. I'll oh, forget it. <laughs> Hey, you guys. Here's a recipe for chicken cacciatore. Shall I try it tonight? Yeah, sounds good, Charlie. What is it? Oh, well, chicken you float around in some kind of red sauce. Sounds pretty. Like that lady's pink. <laughs> chicken, what you call it, be real good on it. Yeah, I'll serve it with dumplings and tassels and... <laughs> Oh, I, 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 I mean, it's, it's spared. I'll get it. Hi. Hi. Is this the Douglas residence? Yes, ma'am. Well, I have a package here for Mr. Stephen Douglas. It's some clothes. Hey, you guys, it's Flame the Rose. <laughs> I mean, Miss Flame the Rose. I didn't recognize you with your clothes on. Uh, uh, well, um, come in, Margaret. Is it all right? Well, of course it's all right. Ben told us all about you. I'm the one who saw you last night. You were wearing that other thing. Uh, Ernie. Well, she was, weren't you? That's enough, Ernie. Uh, Margaret, this is uh, Uncle Charlie. Uh, uh, how do you do? Oh, yeah. And uh, this is Chip and uh, this is Ernie. Hi, yeah, Dad. Oh, and this is Robbie. Fellas, this is Margaret Smith. Hi. How do you do? How do you do? Can I call you Flame? It's a pretty name. Margaret reminds me of Margaret Guckenheim. Yeah! <laughs> Robbie, I think these are yours. Oh, uh, thank you. Your father was kind enough to lend them to me last night. We had a little emergency. You had a couple of loose spangles, so I tightened them up. <laughs> well, uh, come on in and sit down, Margaret. I'll heat up some coffee. Fine, Charlie. Watch your step, Bert. Maybe you'd like some cold pot roast from my icebox. <laughs> no, I, I don't think I have time for pot roast. I'm on my way to the airport. This oh. is uh, sort of thanks and goodbye. Oh. But I did want to tell you something before I left. All right, everybody. All you kids, out. Oh, no, no, please, all of you. Margaret, uh, believe me, no thank you speeches are necessary. <laughs> this isn't a thank you speech. It's just something I want you to know. I did some thinking last night for a change. I guess you don't get much homer. <laughs> I realized I hit rock bottom. Dancing at a bachelor dinner and locked out of my hotel room and depending on a complete stranger for help. It isn't what I had in mind when I left Peoria. So, uh, this morning I wired home for some money. Enough to pay my hotel bill and for railroad fare and... and I tore up your check. And, uh, I'm going home. I'm going back to my old job in the department store. Back to a lot of nice, unglamorous people I used to think were squares. And I'm going to try to pick up the pieces and make a life that a man like you could respect. Because last night I realized I wanted your respect very, very much. And I hope someday I'll get married and have some kids. And, and I hope their father will be a real gentleman like you. Thank you. Well, bye bye. Wait. Charlie, I'll bet chicken catch a would be very good at that. 
Sure it would. With or without tassels. <laughs> Oh, well, thanks, but uh, at my age, I think golf's more my speed. Don't let me interrupt your game. Well, we're just horsing around, Dad. Okay, gang, let's go. Come on, Gary. Let's go, Tom. Come on. You're clear. Now shoot. Oh, nice try. Uh, Ernie. Yes, Dad? Ernie, uh, don't you ever get the ball? No. But it's your, uh, it's your driveway. And my basketball. <laughs> don't you think it'd be nice if the fellas let you shoot once in a while? This is dog eat dog. But like you said, I gotta keep trying. You said it didn't matter whether you won or you were a big star. The main thing was to keep trying and do your best. Yeah, that's what I said. Well, doesn't it still go when you don't have much hope? Well, sure. Does. So uh, get back in there and uh, keep trying. You betcha, Dad. <laughs> That game really takes it out of you. Yeah. Hey, there's old Mike. Now he shows up. Yeah. We're gonna play two on two. Hi. Hi. Hey, what's with the W? Winnebago. Winna who? Winnebago College. My dad went there. He was a four-letter man. I think my dad was, too. We've got an attic full of old trophies. I think we have, too. My dad was in tough Eastern competition. I think my dad was, too. I could show you Golden Gloves runner-up medal from Madison Square Garden. I think I could, too. Madison Square Garden? I'll just bet. Look, you guys, I say we go home. Each guy finds his family's best group, and we meet here in 20 minutes. Good idea. Talk's cheap. Yeah, talk's cheap. Okay. My dad says, put up or shut up. All right. Put up or shut up. <laughs> well, I'll see you guys in 20 minutes. We'll prove this one to for all. What? I'll show those guys. <laughs> Uncle Charlie. Hey, you didn't drink your carrot juice. I don't like carrot juice. You don't have to like it. It helps you see. I don't need carrot juice to help me see. I wear glasses. Come on, drink it. I don't have time. I gotta dig up Dad's best trophy and meet the guys. Where are they, Uncle Charlie? All that junk is up in the attic collecting dust. Okay. Hey, you still didn't drink your carrot juice. <laughs> Kids don't know what's good for them. <laughs> I don't need it. I've seen everything. <laughs> Those kids don't look too close. <laughs> debating team? Oh, it was a real tough debate. Oh, they fought all the way. Debating? You gotta be kidding. I'll tell you guys something. My dad could beat your dad any day of the week, right now. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put up or shut up. Put your money where your mouth is. Yeah. Okay. How about our dads having a free for all? Fight to the finish. <laughs> no, nah, they're too civilized. Basketball? Yeah, sissy stuff to my dad. Touch football? You gotta be kidding. 
My dad's rough. <laughs> I've got it. A tough, mean, hard tail. That's the idea. And like what? A cross-country run, two miles, through the woods, as far as Groving's gas station and back. I like it. Suits me. You got a deal. A week from a day. Time to train for. No alibis. Okay? Okay. Okay. And may the best dad win. Don't touch that dial. My Three Sons will return after this. My Three Sons in TV Land. Ah, morning, fellas. Hi, Hi, Dad. Hi. I'm sorry I'm late. It seems the older I get, the more sleep I need. How are your legs, Dad? How are my legs? Well, nobody's whistled at him lately, any? Why? You figuring on entering Dad in a beauty contest? Not exactly. What I entered him in was a race. Uh, a race, Ernie? What kind of a race? Well, two miles across country. That's pretty funny. I'm serious. Mike and Gary and Tom were bragging about their dads. One thing led to another. And another led to me running two miles across country? Against Mr. Wynn and Mr. Bennett and Mr. McCracken. Oh, uh, when is this supposed to take place, sir? Next Saturday. Well, I'll tell you. You make it a saxophone contest or a bridge tournament or matching sacroiliacs or something like that. <laughs> but uh, no running across country for two miles, not at my age. <laughs> Dad, you can beat those old guys. Ernie, I know those old guys, and I know they have sense enough not to get involved. <laughs> well, what if they do and you don't? Well, then I'll be the only one going to work on Monday morning. You sure? I've never been sure. Now, come on, eat your breakfast. Dad, was I that weird when I was a kid? Yeah, I think so, too. I remember one time you wanted me to beat up Norman's father. I very cleverly took care of it over the phone. But, uh, a father has to protect himself at all times. <laughs> What are you so happy about? Oh, I took a beating at school. You don't look it. Not physical, spiritual. Those three loudmouth kids were making up the rules for the dad's race. Yeah? Well, if they said anything rotten about our dad, I'll clobber him. Well, that's the terrible part. They didn't say anything about him. They just took it for granted he wouldn't compete on account of their dads are athletes and our dad was on the debating team. <laughs> well, it just shows our dad's smart enough not to get involved in that dumb race. I realize it's dumb. Sometimes a guy has to do dumb things. It's a matter of honor. Like if a kid dares you in front of a girl to eat a raw egg. I guess that's right. Yes. Joe Linden? Well, certainly send him right in. Hello, Joe. Hi, Steve. Well, what brings you out of the bank this time of day? Well, I, I had to see you. Uh, I'm not overdrawn. No, Steve, I'm in trouble. Well, then, sit down, Joe. Thanks. What's the trouble? Well, you know my son, Gary. Oh, yeah, he was over at the house playing basketball with Ernie the other day. He's a very coordinated kid. Uh, that's the trouble. He is, and I'm not. Wait a minute. Did you come over here to talk to me about that ridiculous cross-country race? Uh, it isn't ridiculous to me, Steve. It's tragic. Well, I just told Ernie I, I wouldn't even consider it. Well, that's, that's easy for you, but well, just my luck, Steve. Gary loves and admires athletes, and, well, I've, I've never been any good. You, but Ernie told me all the other fathers were loaded with trophies and medals. Gary was just trying to protect my image. He knows all our medals were won by his mother. <laughs> I'd sure like to fit the picture that Gary has of a father, but I, I've never won anything in my whole life. Well, then, Joe, just do what I did. Tell him you won't do it. I, 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 I can't. Gary, Gary expects me to chicken out. I know that look in his eye. But if all the other fathers refuse and there isn't any race, then Gary can't blame you. Do you know Harry McCracken, Mike's dad? Oh, yeah. Yeah, even among beavers, Harry would be considered eager. <laughs> in there for any kind of contest, just to show off. Well, I pleaded with Dave Bennett. He's put a lot of weight on lately, but he still thinks he's 20 years old. Well... I, I just wanted to find out what you intended to do. Well, I intend to have the courage to admit that at this point I am no cross-country runner. Sure. Ernie will admire you anyway. Well, so long, Steve. Well, so long, Joe. Hi, 
Harry. Oh, hi, Dad. Ah. I got it. Hey, you got nothing. That was a lucky shot, Harry. I can't seem to get the idea. Well, you keep trying, you'll get it. Dad, those things you tell us kids, do they only go for kids? Oh, no. No, the older you get, the harder you have to keep trying. And to do your best, even when the odds are against you? Right. Except when you don't feel like it. Oh, no, no. That's when you have to give it a little extra. Well, then how come? How come what? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ernie, are they actually going to have that cross-country race? To have it? The other three dads can't wait for Saturday. They're real fighters. Dad, you said a man should accept a challenge and do his best. And you said win or lose. I wouldn't expect you to win. You being on the debating team and all that. But at least... Okay. What time do I have to be on the starting line Saturday? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Okay, here, let's see shoot then. One. Two. Three. Four. Come on, Dad. Quit clowning. Don't you worry about your dad. I'll run rings around those old guys. Good. All right, Mike, shoot it hard. hard. Are you all right? Sure, I just lost my balance. Oh, you wait till I get in there against those out of shape codgers. You'll be proud of your dad. We'll murder him, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. Dad, are you all right? Dad, maybe you ought to find some excuse. Anyway, who needs a race? No, no, no. 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. What'd you stop for? I'm waiting for my breath to catch up. I lost it back there someplace in the 70s. <laughs> Get yourself a rope and join me. Look, I'm a lover, not an athlete. <laughs> one, hundred, two, hundred, three, hundred, four, hundred, five, hundred. Then I invited you to have lunch with me because I have a problem. I have a broken back. I just try to get in shape. I hurt muscles I didn't even know I had. I feel great. You all remember my pitch about calling this off to begin with. And I was surprised at you. You want your son to think you're a panty waist? Uh, he thinks that now. It can only get worse. Joe, if you asked us here to talk about the race, well, after all, it's tomorrow morning. I don't see where there's much we can do about it now. Well, believe me, I'm not asking to win. I, I, I only want to make a showing. Sorry, Joe. Every man for himself. I couldn't even walk two miles. <laughs> Look, supposing I park my car behind some bushes and, and we all jog over to the car and drive to within a hundred yards or so from the finish and, and, well, we come out and pretend we've been running all the way. Yeah, everybody breathe hard. And... Yeah. <laughs> Won't work. I know the route of the race. It's a mile to Grogan's gas station, a mile back. You'd be driving back the way you started. Well, how about hiding in the bushes? Waiting a while and then... Coming out and running to the finish. It's kind of tricky, but I like it. <laughs> An all-out race for the last hundred yards. We could sprint. It would look great. How about it, Steve? Well, if it's so important to Joe, well, sure. I just hope I can last the hundred yards. <laughs> I guess I better skip it. I've been training. <laughs> Don't touch that dial. My three cents will return after this. Soft Rock 97.1 Wash FM has once again been voted Washington's most popular listen while you work radio. <laughs> okay, all runners on your marks. Well, Ernie, you wait here at the finish line, and if everything goes well, I'll be back. Oh, no. Those guys will be on our bikes, pacing you guys. It's part of the deal. 
We kids figured you needed us to pace it. To pace us? You mean you fellas are going to ride along with us? For sure. We'll be with you the whole two miles. On your mark. Get set. Go! <laughs> At least they started. That's farther than I figured they'd get. Do we have plenty of liniments? Two miles to go. Why don't we go have lunch and see a double feature? We'll be back here in plenty of time. <laughs> Attaboy, Dad. You got those clunkers beat a mile. Come on, Dad. We'll pass them in the strip. <laughs> Dad, you tired yet? Not a bit. Don't you worry about me. We're getting pretty far ahead, yeah? Well, there's a long way to go, Ernie. Besides, I didn't promise to win. I just promised to do my best. And this is about it. Come on, Dad. Sprint! Oh! Oh! That's one all right, Dad. <laughs> Dad, you okay? Okay. Are you out of your mind? I'm ruined for life. Oh, my leg. <laughs> Mike, I've got a chally horse that's killing me. Call an ambulance. Huh? Look. Hey, it's Harry. Oh, come on, let's go. There's a halfway mark. Okay. Get up, Dad, please. Don't you understand, son? It hurts. Like, oh. Mm -hmm. Hey, Dad, you didn't catch the sign. Oh. <laughs> Atta boy, Steve. Good for you. Let's go, Dad. Winning may not be the important thing, but it sure beats losing. <laughs> Ernie. What? Yeah? Ernie, I'm going to have to stop and take a rest. Okay. Take a breather. We're way ahead anyway. Then we'll go for the finish. Ernie, I'm not so sure I can finish. Sure you can. We got the race in the bag. Oh, come on, Dad, you can do it. I don't know, I'm pretty tired. I may have to finish on all fours. Well, if that's your best, go ahead, on all fours. <laughs> hey, Dad, here comes Mr. Linden. Well, what do you know, Ern? Come on, Dad, they're going to pass us. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> well, let's go. Quick. Hey, they're passing us. Dad, they ain't passing us. Well, what do you know? Oh, come on. Come on, we gotta catch up to him. Okay. Okay. <laughs> They've already broken the record. What record? For the slowest time in the history of racing. Any age, any distance. <laughs> hey, here comes somebody. That's that. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Linden. Yeah. Come on, Dad. You can do it. Sprint. Come on. Come on. Go faster. Come on. 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 You were great. You actually finished. Yeah, I finished. Sure did. Came in second. Came in second. How's your leg, Dad? Huh? Oh, oh, my leg's fine. <laughs> you were great, Dad. <laughs> thanks, Dad. Uh, thanks for what, Ernie? For letting Mr. Linden win. Oh, 
Oh, he, he ran a good race, Ernie. Uh, thanks for what, Joe? Oh, come on now, you won the race fair and square. You just outlasted the rest of us, that's all. Well, sure. As a matter of fact, I thought I was going to beat you there for a minute until I got that uh, Charlie horse. <laughs> oh, it'll be all right. I'll put some heat on it, take a little rest, and... <laughs> yeah, those things take a little longer at our age, don't they? Yeah. Now, I'm afraid this is the first and last annual father's cross-country race, huh, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations, anyway. Huh? Your son called you Tiger now. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah, I'll see you next week, Joe. Goodbye. Well, how do you like that, Charlie? He accuses me of throwing the race so he could look good to his son. Yeah. Well, you either threw the race or it was the most miraculous recovery from a Charlie horse in medical history. Oh, well, you know, Charlie, at our age, you overstrain and you get a muscle spasm and you rest a little and it's gone. No, I don't know. I never ran a two-mile race against three guys old enough to know better. Hi, Dad. Oh, hi, Ern. Why, you think Gary Menon's dad was headed for the Olympics just because he won this morning. Gary's really proud of his dad. Yeah. All of a sudden, his dad can lick his weight in Wildcats. You and I know he couldn't beat you on his best day if you weren't Mr. Nice Guy. Ernie, you didn't say anything like that to Gary. Oh, no. I just sat there on the bench with the other substitutes and let him rave. Good. <laughs> uh, I guess Gary's just making up for all the years he didn't have anything to brag about, so uh, let him enjoy it, huh? Sure. What I was thinking about was... Uh, 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 Ernie, I know that look on your face. And if it means an uncle race, the answer is no. <laughs>